you know, a lot of kids, um, you know, lose that ability and that creativity that really is innate to them as a young child uh, because they've been told over and over again, this is how you do this. This is the way that a paragraph is written. This is how you write an essay. This is how you start an essay. This is sentence number one. This is sentence number two. This is how to do it. Hello, thank you so much for joining the Falling for Learning podcast. I am T.D. Flanagh, a National Board Certified Educator and Parent who is on a mission to ensure that parents have the strategies, resources, and skills needed to make sure that they know how to get their kids on track for learning and to stay on track for success. So today we're going to be talking about freedom of choice. So this is really important because creativity comes from choice. Freedom of choice, right, is so important. I'm going to say it a couple of times just because it is something that's really being lost from what we're doing in our everyday lives. Um, I know that in the school system is very difficult to uh, remind people and to impress upon people the importance of creativity. And then, of course, this platform is for parents to make sure their children are on track for learning and to stay on track for success. And so we really need to think about how we could give our students, our children, a choice about how they're going to do something or what they're going to do to demonstrate their learning and their knowledge. And sometimes we're thinking, oh, well, I don't do all that at home or whatever, but we do teach our children a lot at home. We may teach them how to cook, clean, to negotiate, to even uh, be um, get along with people. We teach them so much, but we don't think about it that way all the time. But I am really encouraging you to think about it. How are we going to teach our students through a freedom of choice, right? Through freedom of choice, Choice breeds creativity. What can we do? Um, so if you're teaching your children, you know, to do some artwork or and, and you may not be thinking about it that way, you might just be decorating a Christmas tree or, or whatever you're doing, um, decorating for a party or something like that. That might happen. Um, and But give them some choice. Like give them, maybe you're going to stick to a specific color, but you give them a choice about what different patterns that they might use or different um, designs that they could use as long as they stick in that particular color. Um, you could also think about, you know, um, for example, writing. Um, if you're working with your children on writing at home because maybe you do homeschooling or you see that there's a whole a gap in your children's understanding and you're like, no, they, we need to work on writing. So you could say, okay, we're going to write an essay, for example, but maybe you give them the choice about what to write about. Um, so if you want to give them something to write an argument or opinion piece, for example, give them a choice about it. A lot of times as teachers will say, everyone's writing about one thing. And what happens is kids, the kids are getting very, um, they're not interested in the topic. If I tell you to write about snakes, like write about snakes, write an argument about snakes, and you're not into snakes, you don't like snakes, maybe you don't even think about snakes. It's not something that you're interested in writing about at all, but you're told to do it, right? As an adult, we have a choice. We don't feel like doing it. We don't want to continue in this program, whatever it is that who's telling us to do that. Uh, we might have to do this for our jobs, of course. But when we're thinking about kids trying to learn those basic skills to learn how to do something, how do we get there? And that is really important that we think in terms of helping them to connect with what they like and what they love and what they enjoy so that they can also learn the skills Right. Because when they're motivated to do something, they're talking about something that they love or that they're really interested in. They're very curious about. Then that helps them to 
hook into whatever it is that they're doing and gets them to the place where they love to do whatever it is that that they're, you know, they're learning to write, they're learning to draw, they're learning to whatever it is, giving them that freedom of choice allows them to be creative and allows, it motivates them. It gives them that sense of excitement, curiosity. So the freedom of choice breeds innovation. It makes sure the students are progressing. And also, let's think about progress on another level. We want our children to be the leaders of tomorrow. And, you know, that's what we need is progress. We need some progressive ideas or solutions um, to issues. And when we give our children lots of choice and lots of, of ways to be creative, then they're able to exercise those skills so that they can be effective leaders that have creative ways to solve problems. They are able to be innovative and to produce innovations to old issues or old problems or old tools. And that's what we want. You know, that makes our children be able to get to fall in love with learning. Right. Because we've given them some kind of creative license. And one way to do that is the freedom of choice. Right. We want to make sure that they have those experiences and those opportunities to be creative. And when we do, that's what we could get to them really getting to know themselves, get to know who they are. It helps them to really be acquainted with things that they like, things that they don't like very much, and to really get to the, who they are at the core, right? Um, and this, again, can be duplicated across the curriculum, across the content areas and subject areas where they can be creative. So when you're thinking about math, you could help them to think about multiple ways to solve a problem um, and, you know, be creative in how they solve those problems. Um, so, and it could be more than just solving a problem, but also just building a number, multiple ways to build a number. And there's lots of, you know, curriculums and activities to help students really hook into multiple ways to build numbers, um, and structures, and to creatively solve problems. And again, giving them those opportunities, if they have that opportunity again and again to be students, um, you know, to be someone who can think creatively, create, uh, to think flexibly, that is going to give them the advantage that they need to be a leader, to approach problems in different ways to think outside of the box. And when we don't have those experiences, um, when we don't give them the creative license, when we're saying everyone is going to draw a picture of an apple and everyone has to draw the apple like this, um, you know, it really shuts down that experience and their creative muscles may atrophy. You know, a lot of kids, um, you know, lose that ability and that creativity that really is innate to them as a young child uh, because they've been told over and over again, this is how you do this. This is the way that a paragraph is written. This is how you write an essay. This is how you start an essay. This is sentence number one. This is sentence number two. This is how to do it. And a lot of us will say, oh, well, they don't really know how to do it. But what we need to do is really think about where they are, what they know how to do well, so that we can help them build on where they are. Instead of thinking about what they don't have, really look at what they do have. You do have the ability to add simple numbers, like one digit numbers or two digit numbers. Let's help you get to three digit. Um, let's help you with, um, you know, express, you know, showing your artistic skills, like you're showing us that you know how to shade or you know how to, um, 
you know, show depth, but you are going to draw whatever you want. It could be just, you know, any fruit that you want or any one object that you want. Um, but instead of everyone having to draw the apple um, and do it the same way. Now, of course, there are times when everyone needs to draw the same thing. But what the issue comes when there is no choice, when you have to draw the same thing over and, you know, draw the same thing over and over again. Uh, write the same thing in the same way over and over again. Um, you know, even when it goes into reading, like everyone's going to read the same book. Again, it has to be done sometimes. But when are there times that you get to choose that freedom of choice to read what you want, uh, read what interests you, and then choose a project where you're going to demonstrate your comprehension of that reading task, of that, you know, of that book that you read, of that novel that you read. Um, again, this is very key in helping them to hook in to what they like, what their talents are, getting to know what their interests are, and even getting to know what they don't, what they're not interested in. When kids don't have this experience, um, they may not know what they don't like. They may not know what they like um, because there are just rule followers. They are people that are being trained. And this sounds really bad. Hello, parents and caregivers. Join us every Wednesday for our Well-Educated Wednesdays on Instagram Live from 5.30 to 6 o'clock. We will be getting your questions answered about how to get kids on track for learning and to stay on track for success. It's free and you can ask any question that you would like. We're here to serve you and to make sure that you have the tools and strategies needed to make sure your kids are a success. And you can make sure that next generation is on a path to greatness. But this is true, it's true. Um, being trained to to serve others, right? You don't want your child to be only capable of, you know, following a direction from someone. You tell me exactly what to do, I'll do exactly that. Of course, we need to be able to lead sometimes and sometimes we need to be able to follow, right? But if I just know how to follow and I don't have those innovation muscles, you know, toned up, and and in working order then i am in the position where you know even if i'm given responsibility i might just be looking for other people to fill up that day or to tell me what to do or how to do it how to get it together i'm waiting for people and so it's clear okay you're not fit to lead you're not sure what you're supposed to do you don't have that innovation that you need and the vision right the creativity that comes from that freedom of choice you are able to have a vision for what you want or how things should be done and you have your own perspective that is valuable and that you can express and you can articulate to others um, but without that freedom of choice, you're just regurgitating or saying, okay, I'm supposed to do this. I told, I was told to do this and I have to do this and I have to do that. And you don't have any innovative ways to approach problems. You're just going to repeat what everybody else has said. Um, and, you know, it, it becomes really a lack of, um, you know, a lack of agency. And that's really sad. Because if you remember, you know, kids are very creative. They haven't been told a lot of times what, what doesn't fit or what doesn't go. And um, they're thinking about things in a different way, a, a, a way that is unique to them. And that's, you know, no one else can bring that to the table. And that's what your kids need to know. No one else can be them. And of course, people could pretend to be them or act like them but their own special brand of who they are is unique to them. And when you have the freedom of choice, you get comfortable in what resonates with you, what speaks to you, 
and then really helps lead you to finding your place in the world. And a lot of us uh, people don't know like where their place is in the world, where they belong or what they should be doing with their lives. And again, that comes from having that lack of choice and the lack of ability to choose what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. Um, and that is, you know, a travesty. So, you know, the choice is free. You know, we'll, you know, if you're going to draw, you know, the same thing or you have a choice to draw different things, that's free that you could give kids and you could exercise that ability for them to be creative and for them to get to know themselves. You could do that multiple times a day. Um, and again, of course, there should be some balance where there are maybe having to do what everyone does the same thing, but make sure it's not leaning towards most of the time everyone has to do the same thing. Because again, that is a disservice to kids and um, it's something that we need to remember as adults. We have choice all the time, right? And well, not all the time, of course, but we have choice on a regular basis. And, um, you know, as adults, you have to navigate so many things and you have to think about what works best for you and why and how to fit it into your unique life and your unique situation. And uh, that's what you do. You get better as you get older, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but kids need those experiences early. They need to feel like they have some say in what they're doing. And that will, again, help hook them into the learning process, helping them to fall in love with learning, helping them to have the motivation to propel them forward into success. And that's what we want for our children. Um, so again, when we are allowing them the freedom of choice, that's going to make sure that they are becoming leaders that could serve in leadership roles and not just serve in leadership roles, that they could actually be an effective leader who is a problem solver and who could work through how to solve complex issues and situations and conflicts um, and you know, design as well as plan for uh, different um, projects and, you know, all the array of, you know, possibilities. And that comes from giving them a free tool and a free exercise, which is choice. Giving them some time to choose and to think through what they can do. And that can be done in small ways and little ways. Um, I have a... <laughs> Um, I have an, a niece who, you know, when she's little, I, I was like, she was over at my house and I was asking her like, okay, what kind of, um, you know, you want cereal or, you know, she's wanted cereal, like what kind of choice, you know, what kind of cereal I had, maybe three different choices and she chose the cereal. And then I reached in, um, the cabinet to get a bowl and she's like the pink bowl, you know? <laughs> so I was laughing because I didn't even think about giving her a choice about which bowl, but you know, she was already ready with her answer for the choice. So she was very comfortable um, giving her choice and having a choice. And um, again, it gives kids confidence. Um, and a lot of people get, you know, that analysis paralysis when they don't know how to choose and they, they weren't given a lot of choice as they were growing up. Um, and, you know, I definitely experienced that where I was definitely just a rule follower and, and, and many times wasn't given a choice or wasn't thinking about how I might get, get a choice or asking for a choice. Um, and just used to just following what, you know, the way things were. And I remember in certain situations as an adult, I really had to make choices and I really didn't know how to make a choice and I didn't really know what I liked or what was best. Of course, I made it through, um, but in other situations, uh, sometimes we really need to think about how we might be hobbling or, um, you know, giving our children a disadvantage. And so, you know, one of the main things we talk about when we're talking about falling in love with learning, we also want to think about what we might be doing that's creating the opposite effect. Um, what might we be um, 
doing that is you know making kids hate learning or hating the learning process or really um, just kind of staying away from those activities because it's so unenjoyable it, it brings um, so much anxiety and stress towards them um, so you know really keep it that in mind what are we doing to support our kids and freedom of choice and, mo and many times it is free. Of course, there are some times where it will cost you more money with certain choices. Um, but it, it just gives our students so much, our kids so much when we can give them the, you know, just the space and the grace to learn what is best for them and what their preferences are. Um, it, it just gives them so much confidence. And so we really have to think about that in small ways and in large ones. How can we give them the freedom of choice, the gift to choose? Um, and so it's going to take some like some little heavy lifting from us sometimes or some flexibility on our parts. But it gives them so much that more that they can work with when they get older. They're not just learning how to write, but they're also learning how to be creative when they're writing, to be problem solvers, to think flexibly. Um, and that will give them a head start on people who aren't given that. Um, and, you know, it's something that we really need to really ponder and think about. What are some practices that we're doing that are helping our students? to fall in love with learning, to gain independence, to um, really garner the skills that they're needed. Um, and then what are some things that we're doing that are creating that opposite effect? Um, and a lot of times when we talk to students, they will tell you, like, these are the rules. This is how this is supposed to be done and we can't do it differently. And sometimes, those rules make good sense and are sound and sometimes they're rules just because they're a rule sometimes uh we're doing things just to make it easier for teachers instead of um what's best for students um so as parents who are the first teachers and the continuous teachers we really have to think about what are we going to do to circumvent those issues, to make sure that we are going to give our children the advantage by giving them the freedom to choose. Again, the freedom to choose breeds creativity. It creates leaders who can think flexibly, that can be problem solvers, people who can um, make sure that they are able to achieve progress towards a goal as a leader, um, that they are innovative, right? And again, the downsides of not leaning into creativity and giving them creative license, uh, giving them the freedom to choice, the downside is we're having people who are producing the same types of things um, instead of having more creative iterations of a project or a product or, um, you know, a service. When we can be thinking about how we can be progressive, how we can improve upon the original and how we can continue to make it, um, you know, more and more creative and um, more functional and an ease, ease of use, right? Can make the use of a particular uh, tool or resource easier. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again for joining the Falling for Learning podcast. I am T.D. Flynn All. We drop new episodes every Saturday at 5 p.m. Join us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at fall, the number four learning. YouTube.com at fall for learning. 
You can also catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the major podcast platforms. And we appreciate you for joining us and making sure that you have the tools and resources to make sure your children are on track for learning and can stay on track for success. Have a great week. Thanks again. Thank you.